<laughs> Due to the increased popularity of devotional, we had to reevaluate and take a look at it and decided to go to a ministry format of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 for the videos so we can begin to expand the devotional series from what we're doing now, which is reading the devotionals every day, to also some Bible studies, you know, that we'll be able to upload and to present to them for all informational purposes and for relating Jesus in a more efficient way sometimes, because sometimes it's like, you know, you got something more to say and you just can't keep it down to a small amount. <laughs> Whereas my wife likes to say, if I start talking about Jesus, it's going to last all day and all night. Well, we may not record like that, but after talking it over with my producer, he's decided that we need to expand. You see, that morning's good for that, but he's in charge of the devotionals. But our producer for Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 has determined that we need to take this joy outside of ourselves and we need to shed it abroad with other people. So, given that we're moving in that direction in such a positive way, emotional is maturing and becoming Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 ministries, video ministry. And as we do that, we'll transition slowly over to it. And not that much will change, you know, for the devotionals, but there'll be some changes, you know. And as winter sets in, we'll probably have to move indoors, maybe. And we're trying to bring a little better quality. Not much. <laughs> you can't expect too much from us. But such as it is being a Jesus Gypsy and having the Lord to sit here and to share with, what's over the Lord? your God is doing with you, don't be afraid to change it or to expand it and to grow bigger or smaller or do whatever it is that God would do. But as he's pruned us, he's also caused us to bear more fruit. And so in that way, I'm kind of excited to see what will happen. And so today in Tozer, it looks like Tozer, <laughs> religious teaching gives light. That is not enough. Wherewith he saith, Awaken thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Ephesians 5.14 To find the way, we need more than light. We need also sight. The Holy Scriptures are the source of moral and spiritual light. Yet I consider that I cast no aspersion upon the hollow page when I say that its radiance is not by itself enough. Light alone is not sufficient. The coming of knowledge is like the rising of the sun. But sunrise means nothing to the unseeing eye, only the sight benefit from only the sighted or those that can see benefit from the light of the sun. Between light and sight there is a wide difference. One man may have light without sight, and he is blind. Another may have sight without light, and he is temporarily blind. But the coming of the light quickly enables him to see. We have said this much to point out that religious instruction, however sound, is not enough by itself. It brings light, but it cannot impart sight. The text without the Spirit's enlightenment cannot save the sinner. Salvation follows a work of the Spirit in the heart. There can be no salvation apart from the truth, but there can be, and often is, truth without salvation. You see, oftentimes there's a lot of preaching because it's a religious zeal that causes people to run out and to say, you need to do this, and you need to do that, and if you do this, and you do that, then you're going to get this. And they go along in a religious way, which causes some good. They become moral people, they become instructed people, they become knowledgeable of the Bible. But without a relationship with Jesus to know when the scriptures apply to certain circumstances or how they apply to a given perspective, a religious person can quickly become a religious hypocrite because they can develop into a righteousness that's of the law and not of grace. They don't know how to extend grace to another. So often you see preachers 
slamming people and slamming the church and slamming this and slamming that when Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but he came that the world might be saved through him. And so sometimes the gospel is presented in a weird way, kind of a, a strange way, kind of like, if that's God, I don't know if I want it. But God did not intend for us to become only religious or only not instructed but to have a balance of the two, that we need to bring a personal dynamic. We need to bring that dunamis, that Holy Spirit inside of us, so that He could reveal to us how it fits to our day. Because you know as well as I do, I can I can quote out and tell you, you know, the Ten Commandments, you know, and you got to do this, you know. And, and depending upon where you're at, you'll either do them or don't. But God, because He's there with you, and if He's in you, then... The words you hear, if they fit from Scripture and are given to you, then they become real to your life. And then as you read them and as you study in the Bible, you begin to apply your understanding and God gives you wisdom to make it applicable to your present circumstances. For instance, you know, telling you that, you know, oh, I don't know. To plan a forum, you know, because the Bible says so, so if you'd have food, doesn't make much sense if you don't have any ground to plant. <laughs> now, does it? But you would interpret that if the Holy Spirit was instructing you that maybe that means I'm supposed to go out and get a job so that I have money to buy food. That's like working in a farm. Although I'd rather work in a farm than get money because, frankly, I like to be in the dirt and I kind of see a direct connection rather than all these other kind of superficial connections. But the point being is that God applies it to you personally in whatever way he chooses. And that's what Tozer's trying to say is that you can't just be religious and you can't just be relationship. There's a balance between the two. And when you find it, you find that God makes it real to you. How many multiplied thousands have learned the catechism by heart and still wander in moral darkness because there has been no inward illumination? The Pharisees looked straight at the light of the world for three years, but not one ray of light reached their inner beings. Light is not enough. Scripture is not enough. Reading is not enough, and I like to add one to it. I don't think people should be ignorant of faith and just say, well, I believe and I have a promise that I run on it, but that you should have intelligent faith. You should know when and where and how and why something fits to your circumstance that works in your life, that somehow is appropriate to the circum situ circumlocution. Yeah, that's the word. Circum circumlocution of your given circumstances and the word so that it is a word aptly spoken like apples of silver in pictures of gold. You know exactly when the right thing to say for the right circumstances because it's God who gives you the word at the right time. And then he gets the glory. You see how it works? It's not so much about you, but him in you. So if you let it go and let him, then you'll find out that you know the balance between religion and instructions and relationship and obedience. Because people try to put obedience into religion, and it, it doesn't work. It's instruction, not obedience. Now, you put obedience into relationship, and it's like, oh, God's speaking, I think I'll do it. Okay. You see, instruction, obedience, religion, relationship, they go hand in hand. And after all, as far as I know, you have two hands. <laughs>